This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to the end to hear about how you can get one month of Skillshare for free. Hey people, so I want to show you some pretty crazy software I found the other day called NVIDIA Canvas. It allows you to paint these big blobs over here on the left and get these results over here on the right. So in this video, let's talk about it. All right, let's start with talking about what, what software this is. This is called NVIDIA Canvas. And it allows you to basically paint simple brush strokes on your canvas, which are then ran through NVIDIA's uh, AI machine learning gobbledygook. And you come out with actual decent looking backgrounds. And I'll link to this site in the description. You guys can read all about it here. I, what I found is there's really no better way to explain this than to just get into the software and, and uh, use it. So uh, I'm going to start with a blank canvas, actually. So let's make a new canvas here. Now, real quick, the UI in this is very basic. I honestly uh, haven't even used all the features, but what is here is pretty easy to understand if you're familiar with other drawing apps and digital art apps. Uh, there is a brush, which allows you to brush things on. Uh, there's a line tool. Haven't used that yet. Uh, there's an eraser, there's a fill tool, uh, there's a material picker, so it's sort of like a color eyedropper, I guess you would call it. Uh, there's a pan thing, which most of us are probably using the space bar for that. And then there's a the brush size here. Uh, and then across the top, you've got new file, open file, save file, export the file. It'll export as a PSD, including all the layers, if you want. Uh, undo, redo, and then your scale. This little option here will let you choose between... Uh, what they call dual view, map view, and image view. We're going to keep it on both because it's easier to show kind of how this works. Before that, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I intend to launch a new drawing and painting channel soon, and I still have no idea what I'm doing on YouTube, so I decided to check out Marquez Brownlee's class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. I'm a huge fan of his YouTube channel. His skills are obvious. I found it to be a great class focused on exactly what I was looking for. In my case, how a pro YouTuber handles videos. Of course, there are thousands of classes on a huge variety of subjects with curated lists at the top classes in all the major categories. So you can jump right to the best classes right at the start. It's easy to find what you're looking for. You could pick up some new Procreate skills, get a better grasp of Clip Studio, learn some cool guitar licks, build a website, learn about logo design, there's literally something for everybody here. So the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get one free month trial of Skillshare. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Check the link in the description, learn some cool stuff, and support this channel at the same time. Now back to the video. So I'm going to start by choosing the stone material over here. So over here on the right side, you get all these little material options. And if you hover over it, you can see there's sky, clouds... Uh, hills, mountains, water, and a bunch of other stuff. I'm just going to start with the stone thing. Now, you can actually paint on uh, on either side of the canvas with this. So if you paint on the left side, it's going to show up, or you can paint directly on the right side, it's going to show up. And what I found to start off with, uh, to me what works best in playing around with this, is to just fill the... Uh, say the whatever is below your horizon fill that in with uh you know whatever main material that you're wanting on the ground and i'm wanting to do uh something with some stones to begin with and uh so i'm just going to fill all of this in with the stone material and you can see that it's trying to uh fill all of this in in, in an interesting way with uh with the stone tool if you pick grass and try to paint over the top of this, you will get grass. And vice versa, if you were to go in and try flowers or whatever, uh, some of these some of these things get a little weird. Um, but there are uh, there's stones and rocks and gravel and all sorts of different things you can do in here. So this is all on one layer. So I'm actually going to make another layer, and I'm going to drag this below. And I'm going to choose the mountain tool just to show you what this does. So if I color in a mountain back here, we've got a mountain. We go up this way, there's another mountain. And what's interesting about this is like you can see it's actually added some water in here. Like it's trying to find interesting ways to blend these mountains and these rocks at the same time. 
And uh, I wouldn't really call this video a tutorial, even though I am showing you how to use it. I really just wanted to talk a little bit about where digital art's probably heading, and it includes stuff like this. You know, I can totally see uh, digital art apps down the line where this is the first version of this. You know, this is very early on in this kind of technology. But I can imagine this is a plugin, you know, running in Photoshop, running in Clip Studio, down or some other new software down the line. But it's absolutely fascinating to me how well this works. And um, so let's take what we've got here and, and dress it up a little bit. So uh, I'm going to choose the river option, and let's say that I want to extend from this uh, you know little valley down here. Let's say that this river runs right through here. And I want to do this on the layer on top so it actually shows up. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, a little smaller brush size. And I'm going to try to extend this. And you can see as soon as I start brushing on the canvas, it is instantly starting to fill this with water. And if I turn it, it's going to try to bend the rocks around to make it show up here. And uh, obviously it's not perfect. If you get close to this, you can see there's some artifacts and things. but you know, for just a rough environment as a reference point or, uh, you know, a blurry background in a comic or something, like, I can totally see this being, you know, a thing. And, um, oh, by the way, the styles here, uh, these will change on the fly to different lighting setups. And it slightly affects uh, the actual rocks and things. You can see they're, they're actually shifting around depending on what colors we choose. But anyway, I like this one. Uh, the one of the green is good too, but let's go with this one. So anyway, here's my uh, little river. Now let's say that I don't like these grassy mountains, and I want to replace those with, you know, stone mountains. So I haven't actually tried this, but I'm going to the Fill tool. I'm going to make sure that I'm on the uh, stone, and then just fill. Well, it's filling everything because I'm on the layer above. So if I go to the layer below where the mountains actually are, you can see that it tried to turn this stone into a mountain. It didn't really work as well as I was hoping. So um, anyway, let's grab some grass. And let's say we have a little, uh, a little grassy spot right here. This thing is getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> and then we can grab, you know, grab our rock formation again and put some rocks in here. But you can see how quickly it tries to compensate and basically, you know, redraw the environment based on what you have here. So, you know, it's pretty quickly completely changed the feel of this uh, to something, you know, entirely different than what we had before. So, um, Anyway, let's try another one. Uh, this time I'm going to start with, uh, we'll start with grass this time. Make sure my brush is big and I'm going to fill all this in. And again, uh, I like mountains, so or some hills maybe, so let's, let's put some hills back here. Starting to look like uh, Windows XP background here. And then maybe way off in the distance, beyond the hills, we have mountains. You can see it's trying to like put some some clouds in front of the mountains. And you see this interesting archway it made out of that little hole there. And now maybe let's bring some water into the picture. But I, I love how quickly this comes together without having to think too much. Like, let's turn this into some stones. Maybe some more out there. Maybe make this a little bit taller. And this is another stone wall tool that's in here. We can build up some of these rocks. Throw a few down here in the water. But you can see all I'm really doing is putting on these big blotches of color and each one of these colors associated with one of these materials now one catch with this that i will say is is makes this unavailable for a lot of people at this moment but it's the first generation so what i'm expecting to happen is either this will eventually get opened up to more video cards 
uh, and more options. Right now, it requires kind of a chunky video card. So if you have, if you go to the system requirements, uh, it requires a, a GeForce RTX, uh, NVIDIA RTX, or a Titan RTX GPU. Now, honestly, if you don't know if you have those, you probably don't have those. But the good thing is, this is the first generation. This stuff is probably going to come out on other cars down the line. There will be other people copying this. But I thought it was an interesting way to show just how far we've come with, you know, art and machine learning and all of that kind of stuff. I'm fascinated by it. <laughs> I'm, I'm completely fascinated by this software. Um, I have a very fast computer with a very nice video card, which is why it runs so well on my computer. If your computer does not handle this, let's say you do have an RTX card, it doesn't run this quickly, there is an option in the settings if you go to that little, uh, uh, what is that, little, little, little uh, wrench, not a wrench, cog, settings, anyway. This auto paint, by default, it just, as you make marks, it automatically tries to create, you know, the image side. You can disable this and F5 will then render. So if I turn this off for a second, just to show you, uh, I'm going to grab, uh, we'll grab the rock one again. And I can do this and this and this, and it doesn't affect anything because it hasn't rendered yet. So when I hit F5, then it renders the new stuff. So if your computer is not quite beefy enough to handle that, then that is an option as well. And what's impressive to me in just playing around with this is how well it typically handles transitions. You know, like the idea of just mixing stone and water and it actually coming out with something that doesn't look horrible is pretty impressive t to me. So uh, I'm going to grab the river tool here and just extend this down this way. And you can see that it even tries to do a little bit of reflections uh, from what's above it. It's not perfect, but you know, I don't think it's really intended to be. But I'm just kind of touching with the brush here to spread this water out. And you can see you're getting all these interesting little areas where the water's really shallow and there's some mud up here. There is a mud tool, I think, if you want to extend that even further and just make this whole place look like a mess. You've got that kind of gravel look going through there. But yeah, very, very quickly we've dried our lake out and, you know. Uh, again, it's not perfect. we got some weird stuff going on up here. We can change that up, extend the gravel down maybe, and then put some water back. <laughs> so this software is is insane, right? Like I, I've never seen anything quite like this. I'm excited for what this means for the future because I know uh, there's another YouTuber I follow you guys know, Borodante. I know he did a video recently about how digital art is dead. Uh, I don't think it's dead, but I think we're going to have some interesting tools uh, going forward. Uh, you can imagine this being built into, you know, digital art software, uh, into uh, photo editing software. It's fascinating stuff. I'm intrigued. I'm interested to see where this goes in the future. I thought this might be something some of you guys might be interested in checking out. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this weird video. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.